our guest for this week's Touch Basins Hole is American television producer and director Kevin Bright, who is best known for being one of the executive producers of the smash hit US sitcom Friends. And as much as I'd like to talk about his time on that show, he has joined us today to talk about his latest directorial work, and that's a documentary on the dog meat industry here in South Korea. It's called Nurongi, and it's an unflinching work that delves into the history and culture of dog meat consumption in Korea, as well as the conflicting attitudes towards it in Korean society. The documentary premiered at the Seoul Eco Film Festival in June, and I'm glad to say that we're able to connect with him in LA via video call. Mr. Bright, thank you for being on the show today. Thank you, and thanks for having me. Can you first tell us about how you began making this documentary? When did you first learn about dog meat culture and its industry here in South Korea? I learned about dog meat culture about five years ago. And, uh, you know, when I first found out about it, uh, I thought, you know, must be some mistake because, you know, I know Korea is one of the top economies in the world, one of the top educational systems. And uh, somehow uh, dog meat didn't seem in character. So uh, I, I made a trip with my wife, who is... Uh, uh, co-founder of an organization that rescues uh, dogs from the dog meat industry in Korea and brings them to the United States. And so I went with her and uh, when I got there, I found a lot of confusion, a lot of misunderstanding uh, amongst the Korean people about the dog meat industry. And uh, I thought I found a great story. So you found this story. When did the idea of making a documentary come into uh, the equation? Why did you want to make it into a documentary? Well, as I said, I'm, you know, primarily, you know, although I've been focused in comedy for many years, I consider myself to be a storyteller. And uh, when I saw all of this confusion in Korea around the dog meat industry, I recognized a good story and uh, I just wanted to tell it. When you say confusion, was it from just people you met uh, in your time in Korea? Yes, uh, people that I met, uh, certainly as, as I started to do the film, the confusion grew, if anything, as I started to talk to people on the street. But uh, my uh, executive producer, Tammy uh, Chosasman, who is a Korean-American, uh, a lot of the information uh, came from some of her relatives and friends who were still inside of Korea. And also T Tamri is very w well versed with Korean culture. OK, so when you say confusion, what do you mean by that? So there was confusion, uh, uh, first of all, that whether or not dog meat was legal or illegal. Um, there was confusion over how many dogs were slaughtered annually inside the country, uh, how many dog farms there are in Korea. And I think out of all of this comes the realization of how many total dogs there are in Korea at any given time. So, uh, yeah, I think there was, there, was, there was certainly a lot of confusion. You managed to get a wide range of voices in the film and doing a deep dive into this issue, uh, including those involved in the dog meat industry, from the industry leaders to owners of uh, dog farms, to restaurant owners who serve dog meat and those who eat there as well. And you seem to have been given a lot of access. What was that process like with the industry already not having so much of a positive image, I would have thought that it might have been difficult uh, to get consent and access from these people like you did. Well, I promised everybody who was in the film one thing, is that I was going to make an unbiased film and represent all sides equally in the film. And the Dog Me Association, uh, I obviously filmed with their full cooperation and uh, also, you know, I would say they were very confident about their own position, about uh, 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 the, the place of dog meat in Korean tradition and uh, the feeling that uh, the dogs were slaughtered very humanely. So um, uh, that I got access to show these things, now it's up to the Korean people to decide whether it's humane or not. 
Yes, and as I said in the introduction, it's a very unflinching work, at times very difficult to watch. And I would warn anyone interested in the movie that uh, there were some graphic and difficult scenes to witness. Uh, you certainly didn't seem to turn away from anything and showed everything in the cold light of day, Mr. Wright. <clears throat> I felt that I had to uh, in order for everyone to truly understand uh, all aspects of, the, of this industry and to come to their own conclusion about the place that it should have in contemporary Korean culture. As you said, you met with uh, regular Korean people you interviewed. You also, we also heard from animal activists, veterinarians and uh, dog trainers. Uh, what did you learn that perhaps you didn't know when you started? Well, I think it's more about what I what I learned that I already knew is that a dog is a dog and that all dogs are the same. And uh, what I learned uh, uh, about the industry in Korea was that it was very complex, uh, that it was not just some industry where there were a bunch of people getting rich off of, you know, suffering dogs. Uh, that actually a good part of the dog meat industry was immersed in poverty. And uh, so the, that was something that I learned that made me realize it, 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 it's very complex. The film is available to watch here on YouTube, uh, uh, understand for free. And interestingly, though English subtitles are available, it is presented in Korean with the title and description in Korean first and uh, Korean subtitles embedded into the actual film. It seems like the documentary is aimed at a Korean audience. Would that be correct? And is that what yes. you had in mind? Yes, uh, I made this film specifically for the Korean audience because, uh, uh, as I said in the beginning, I felt there was a story to tell. The end of the story is up to the Korean people. Uh, uh, I've given all the information that I could find and tried to get presented in an unbiased way. And now it's, it's really up to the Korean people to decide whether dog meat still has a place in contemporary society. So there's nothing specifically that you perhaps want Korean audiences to uh, take away. It's you, you want the Korean audiences to come to their own conclusions. Well, the, as I said before, one thing I'd like them to come away with is that there's no difference in dogs. There's no such thing as pet dog and meat dog. All dogs are the same. And I think uh, Hunter uh, uh, says it really well in the film. Uh, they see the same. They smell the same. You know, uh, there's really no difference between these dogs. And Hunter, of course, uh, in, audiences in Korea will perhaps better know him as uh, Kang hyung -wook, who is a very famous uh, dog trainer here, uh, appearing on television shows and uh, other shows, or TV shows as well. Now, Nurangi first appeared, uh, premiered in June at the Seoul Eco Film Festival, and since it's been released on YouTube last month, it's garnered over 300,000 views. What has been the response been like so far? Well, the, the majority of the of the response, as you can see from the comments, uh, has been very positive. Uh, very grateful that I, I made a film that was not uh, a Korean uh, bashing film, that it was respectful, uh, that it was unbiased, and uh, that uh, uh, they learned a lot about their own country, really, from this film. Have those in the dog meat industry that you interviewed, have they seen the movie? Yes, they have. They actually saw the film uh, more, more than a month before it was released, uh, several months. And um, as, as you can imagine, um, the unbiased nature of it uh, did not really appeal to them. They really wanted a film that was uh, promoting dog meat rather than giving an unbiased view. Right, so they had a perhaps negative uh, reaction to it. Was that, what was your reaction to their reaction? <laughs> well, you know, I, I, as I started out this film with having respect for the Dog Meat Association, I hope that in the end of our exchange, you know, that respect was still felt. 
there was obviously a, well, not obviously, but there was an adverse reaction on the part of the dog meat industry to the film. Uh, they thought it was a lie. They, they thought the film has to be destroyed. No one should ever see it. And, uh, you know, uh, I told them that, that, that part of it was not a possibility. <laughs> we can talk about the content of the film. But uh, honestly, at that meeting, there were many things that <clears throat> were uh, a couple of things that were said. I can't remember specifically what they were, hmm. uh, but that gave me second thoughts about the film. And I actually went back and made some changes uh, according to some of the feedback that I got from them. So uh, ultimately, since it was not a pro, pro dog meat film, they're never going to be happy with it. Uh, and I don't know, um, in hindsight, they may have a different uh, feeling about allowing me to film the slaughter. Mm. Uh, because I, I think that's the key to uh, uh, understanding, you know, I, I think we, we, we may or may not know something about how the food we eat arrives on our table, whether it's chicken or or cows or, or pigs. Uh, we may not know much how they're slaughtered, but I felt it was my job to look into that because uh, that is a huge difference in play here. Uh, no other animal is slaughtered by electrocution like that. And it is inhumane. The Korean uh, assembly has uh, deemed it to be in inhumane. It is an inhumane form of capital punishment that has been banned in the United States. So uh, part of the, you know, knowing that something is wrong with this industry is when you see that slaughter and when you understand that there's no regulation really uh, uh, of the dog meat industry in the same way that cows and pigs and chickens are regulated and inspected on a regular base basis and tested tested. The dog meat industry is just the wild west there. And there's no control over it whatsoever. And finally, do you think as uh, an outsider, you were able to view it in the cold light of day uh, in an unbiased way? Um, you know, I would say that I was able to overcome any bias that I had. Uh, uh, during the process of this because I understood that the issue was complex. I didn't set out to make a film that reflected what I felt about dog meat. I set out to make a film that presented all the information and uh, uh, um, uh, took away the confusion uh, around dog meat so that the people who have something to say about dog meat and whether or not it should be uh, in the future is the people of Korea. And that's who I made the film for. And I do think it is a powerful work and also an important document to the situation concerning the dog meat industry here in South Korea. Once again, the film is called Nurangi and it's out now uh, to watch on YouTube. And we've been talking to its director, Kevin Bright, for this week's Touch Base in Seoul. Mr. Bright, we appreciate you making the time to appear on our show today. Okay, next time we'll talk about friends, okay? <laughs> yes, I'd love that. <laughs> okay, thank you for your time. I appreciate it.